They may look sleek and smooth without those circular sonic sensors, but the non-ultrasonic Tesla was not welcomed with open arms by hundreds of Reddit users following Tesla's announcement to remove the ultrasonic sensor from its line of vehicles this month, leaving only the cameras. The big question that experts are asking is, will it be enough for security? Let's find out Tesla's reason for such decision. Make sure you stick with me to the end. Without any further delay, let's get into it. Will autonomous driving still be possible with Tesla using only on board cameras. Two weeks after announcing it was removing ultrasonic sensors, USS New Model 3S were delivered to owners looking noticeably less polka dotted, leading to heated debates and several unanswered questions as the company transitions to an improved Tesla vision and its occupancy network. Tesla chose to gradually remove ultrasonic sensors from its vehicles, relying only on cameras to keep safety and driving assistance functions working. A few users said they would cancel their order, questioning how the system could effectively replace Place the sensor's parking. User Zeke215 posted, I had a base Model 3 to be delivered next month. I'm canceling because of this. Not just because of the USS, but it's a trend in the wrong direction for what is an expensive car. It was reported that Tesla would save $114 per vehicle by eliminating USS. Users said they would have gladly paid the additional $114 to keep the system in the car. However, this figure doesn't include the additional logistics needed to source, stock, and maintain these sensors. What what is the biggest concern about removing these ultrasonic sensors from Tesla cars? Tesla cars currently have 12 ultrasonic sensors on the front and rear bumpers. Sensors are primarily used in parking tasks and, what may be more concerning, in detecting nearby objects. Now, the biggest question about removing the USS system and going strictly with vision is regarding accuracy. Tesla owners like pulling into parking spaces or garages and having sensors indicate down to inches the distance to objects. The concern is that precision will be lost, and many people believe there is no way vision can replace it. But people were defending the switch. One Redditor posted, Who said they don't know if they can guarantee feature parity? I've heard a bunch of Redditors claim that, but Tesla has explicitly said they feel they can match or exceed the USSs with vision alone in the original announcement. I get the impression that some of you guys assume Tesla has a bunch of dumb dumb engineers who are constantly cutting costs without thinking of the consequences. According to Tesla CEO Elon Musk, it will still be possible to achieve full vehicle autonomy using cameras and systems based on artificial intelligence. The decision, however, goes against what competitors in the autonomous driving field are doing. Some companies, such as China's SAIC, are increasingly using sensors such as LiDAR, a radar that operates by light and can detect objects. Tesla anticipated these concerns when it announced it was removing USS. In that announcement, it stated, With today's software, this approach gives autopilot high-definition spatial positioning, longer-range visibility, and ability to identify and differentiate between objects. As with many Tesla features, they claim that their occupancy network will continue to improve rapidly over time. Many Reddit users who are more supportive of the Vision system believe it will reach parity with USS quickly. As the company said in the initial announcement, we will know when Tesla is confident with Vision when the non-Polkadot vehicles get some features enabled. For example, the non-USS Teslas will not be able to use Park Assist, Auto Park, Summon, or Smart Summon. But according to Tesla's website, once these features features achieve performance parity with today's vehicles, they will be restored via a series of over-the-air software updates. Another popular question was if the company would stop supporting the system in USS-enabled vehicles. Tesla posted that at this time, they do not plan to remove the functionality of ultrasonic sensors in their existing fleet. Ultrasonic sensors will only be removed from the Model S and Model X in 2023. The kilowatts on Twitter took a close look at these new Tesla's cameras and discovered no significant differences between the two. Some speculated that Tesla would add a front bumper camera, but that doesn't appear to be the case. The biggest noticeable change is that the repeater cameras on the fenders appear to have a slightly different housing. There's no word whether the lens itself, the sensor, or the angle of the camera is any different from previous Teslas. It is worth remembering that since 2021, the company has also stopped equipping vehicles with radar sensors, a decision driven at the time by the lack of electronic components on the market. The news also follows the inspection by U.S. authorities on the safety of the company's autonomous driving system, Autopilot. Next up, Tesla upgrade suspension, rear seats, and rear doors emergency release. The fragmentation of Tesla Model Y specs by factory
factory and batch continues, with the latest example being the Giga Shanghai version, which now ships with larger rear seat cushions. The seat cushions have seen a small width increase, while many new owners are finding the hidden space of the new mechanical door handle, which can be used if the electrical system or your battery runs out. Tesla CEO Elon Musk responded to Twitter users' comment about the Model Y suspension being stiffly sprung and handles more like a car than an SUV. In response, Musk said that the standard, non-performance 3 and Y suspension in production now has improved comfort without affecting handling. The Model 3 and Model Y suspension is arguably not one of the most comfortable, so these upgrades are very much welcomed. Tesla is also rolling out additional changes for their 2023 model year, starting at their Fremont and Shanghai factories. The 2023 Model Y contains two improvements, among others. According to Chris Zhang, the back seat will now extend out 30 millimeters, which is about 1.2 inches for the left and right passengers, while the middle seat will remain at the same depth. Tesla has also updated the emergency rear door release for the Model Y. Unfortunately, the emergency release is still not readily accessible like the front doors. However, it is now more easily reached. Getting to the new emergency release requires removing the rubber mat from the rear door pockets and lifting a flap. This will reveal a cable with a handle that when pulled will mechanically unlock lash the door. This change is now in place for the Model Ys produced in Fremont and Shanghai, while other factories are expected to follow suit soon. It's expected that these two changes will eventually carry over to the Model 3 as well. No doubts, Tesla is on a mission to make driving easier, more fun, and relaxing. Tesla continues to make safety improvements across their models. Tesla recently announced that it will be pushing an OTA software update to implement Emergency Safety Solutions Help Functionality, which stands for Hazard Enhanced location protocol. Tesla will be the first automaker to implement the help system into their vehicles. Tesla continues to break up its vehicles by factories, with Giga Shanghai lots often getting the new material first. In August, the Chinese-made Model Y received a new airbag for extra protection of the front occupants in the event of a side collision, involving the driver together with the airbag on the left side of the seat, the curtain airbag and the front airbag located in the center steering wheel. The Model Y that recently won the Euro NCAP crash test safety award with a truly exceptional and record-breaking rating was equipped precisely with a far side airbag, for example, while US-made vehicles did not but they had extra airbags for the knees. Another example of fragmentation is BYD's Safer Blade batteries, which reportedly were shipped for installation in Model Y lots made at Tesla's new Gigafactory near Berlin. Additionally, several new multi-layer colors would be exclusive to Giga Berlin's Model Y as well. It remains unclear whether all of Tesla's new Model Ys will receive the larger rear seats or these will be exclusive to Chinese models for some reason. But if history is any indication, eventually every model Model Y will be shipping with the new handle release lines and plushier pads, regardless of their factory origin. Wrapping it up, let's talk about the reveal from Tesla Driver Demographic Study. A recent study of the demographics of the typical Tesla buyer returned some rather unusual results. California auto insurance platform looked up the numbers in their database and found that the quintessential Tesla buyer is an affluent male up to 34 years of age, which puts them squarely in the Gen Z for millennial demographics. The affluent part comes from the statistics that the average Tesla owner lives in a zip code where the typical household income is $85,000, compared to $62,000 for the other study participants who drove other brands of cars. About a third of Tesla drivers in the demographic analysis were likely to earn more than $100,000, while the level of home ownership was twice that of non-Tesla drivers. The third tributary also seems to separate Tesla drivers from the rest of the pack by educational level, as that's how many of the story participants drove a Tesla and had a master's or doctoral degree. As far as occupation is concerned, most Tesla owners were engineers or operational managers. That concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, please do consider giving us a thumbs up and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. See you next time.